Welcome back to Full Circle with Mikali. How are you doing? You know how to get through to us. Triple one, triple four, triple one. That is our SMS line. And it's just going to cost you a shilling to talk to us. So go right ahead and do that. Find us on social media, Switch TV KE on Instagram, Switch TV Kenya on Facebook. Now we're getting into a very interesting conversation. And it's in a book. Well, book and life put together. So that means it's time for Book Circle. And the book that we're looking at today is Yes, I Am My Father's Daughter by Elizabeth uh, Mukamba. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Karibu sana sana sana. This, the reason I say it's a very interesting conversation, it's intertwined, is because this is your story. There are parts of yourself in this book that, like you say at the back, they're heartbreaking. So it says right here, Yes, I Am My Father's Daughter is a heartbreaking story about being lost in a world that is supposed to embrace you and wondering if you will ever be freed from your own worst enemy and that person is yourself. Yes. This is very raw. It is, it is. And genuine and we're here for it, Elizabeth. Please introduce yourself to people because you're not just an author, there's so much more to you and this is your camera. All right. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, Mikali, for having me. I'm happy to be here. My name is Elizabeth Mokamba. Uh, pro professionally, I'm in real estate. I practice valuation, property management, building surveying. And uh, other than that, I consider myself as a mental health enthusiast. And uh, now I am an author. <laughs> so I enjoy writing. Uh, it's a newfound passion for me. Okay. Yeah, that's about me. Is this your first? This is my first book. Oh, wow. And yes. you went hard. <laughs> <laughs> I went hard on it. You really did. Yes. What was the inspiration behind it? Well, there are personal beats to it, but the, the courage or the inspiration to be like, I will share these bits and pieces of me with the world. Yeah, uh, the inspiration behind that book is um, my story. Okay. My story. I, I went through a, a time that I considered a tough time for me emotionally and uh, in a bid to find out why I was going through this tough time, I, I grew an urge to write because I wanted to express myself mm. and since I'm not so much of a talker, yes. <laughs> I'm an introvert. So okay. the only way I could express myself was to write. And this was, how old were you when you started? Uh, the urge to write just came, uh, I think, two years ago, 2018. What? Yes. And that was your way of expressing? That was my way of, of, of expressing myself because uh, at that time, mm -hmm. I was fresh out of campus. Okay. I was out in the world mm -hmm. and um, I had so many questions which I didn't have answers to. Okay. So I needed answers. I needed to express myself. And the only way I could I could do that was to write for me because of my personality. Ah, okay. So the ads grew 2019 and then 2020 <laughs> it gave you birth to a, a book. book. <laughs> yes. The title is quite intriguing. It says, yes, I am my father's daughter. What does that mean? Um, yes, I am my father's daughter. It's a title that I came with right after my father passed okay. yes so i had the urge to write i knew i wanted to write about my life but i didn't have a title i didn't have a title now late 2019 december mm -hmm. 2019 i lost my father and uh, all the questions that i had were answered through that short period of grieving it is mm. through him W through his death that I got to understand him and that is when I, I it was like I, I, I explain in my book that it completed a circle of hurting his death completed a circle of hurting and I became whole by understanding him that way I understand myself and that is why I said I am my father's daughter it is my identity oh my God. 
darkness. Yes. It took a painful experience it for did. you to get answers yes. and to birth a book yes. after that. Yes. So when you talk about the things that you were struggling with, yeah. um, what are some of the things that you, know, you can share with us today? Um, it, in a larger perspective, it's uh, emotional detachment okay. from my family. Mm -hmm. uh, I say emotional because uh, physically we were together. A family, a happy mm -hmm. family, yeah. a known family, a, a relatively w an okay family. No struggles. O we are okay. Yes. But now, when you come to emotional attachment, there are some, some times where you need someone, you need to talk to someone in a deeper level. You have questions, you need answers. You need someone to hold your hand and tell you this is how the world works. Yes. So I did not have that. I felt like I didn't have that type of connection Was with my family. Was it just you or also like, do you have siblings? I have siblings. Did they feel the same? They, I, I came to understand later, later that they felt the same way. Ah. But when I was going through it, I thought I'm the only one. Okay. So that's why I didn't want to tell them. I felt like I will spoil it for them when I tell them I'm not doing okay. Yes. But now later, after our dad passed on, mm -hmm. that's when we had to talk about it. And that's when I realized we were all going through the same thing. We were all detached. Mm -hmm. We were just living, everybody living their life. We are a family physically, but emotionally, we are disconnected. Kabisa. Kabisa. Disconnected. And having this conversation with them uh, later on, d d when they opened up and said that they were feeling the same thing, did it make you feel better or still feel like maybe we needed to receive more emotional connection as children? Uh, it made me feel valid. It made, <laughs> yeah, okay. because I was, I, I felt, I used to feel guilty mm. feeling that way. Yes. Because I haven't lacked anything. Yes. But now I, I feel I am lacking something which I cannot quantify. Yes. So when we opened up and everybody say that they are feeling a little bit uh, detached, mm -hmm. I felt valid i felt that my feelings were valid and we have to tackle this okay and that that also made me want to write more because now i have proof that i am i i'm not complaining no no it is something that is there and it's not just in my head it is not just in my head yes it is something that is there it's happening mm -hmm. so i have to write about it so when you started writing, was yes. it little tiny pieces, kando kando, Amma, you sat down and be like, it's all going to be in one book and I will put everything in here? Uh, when I started, when I started uh, writing, uh -huh. first of all, I, I had a whole, bef before, before my dad passed on, I still wanted to write. Okay. But now when he passed on, the story twisted the story twisted a bit because uh -huh. I had to include him in this story. Now I had to separate ideas because I had an idea of just writing about my life and that's all. But now because I got to understand him, I had to incorporate him in my story. Mm -hmm. So I separated ideas and uh, this book had to come first. There's some other ideas that I, I dropped mm -hmm. because they couldn't fit in this theme. So I, I separated them and this one came first. So when I started writing, I just wrote everything at once according to how I had arranged. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So um, I've just opened a random page okay. here and there's a part that says, uh, I don't know, do I start? Mm -hmm. One day while in college, I, I accompanied a friend to her home and I met her parents. Her father was talking to us and giving us advice about men and relationships. I was shocked, not because of the message I received, but because of whom the bearer of the message was. After that day, I kept thinking about that talk and that voice in my head came up again and asked me, do you really have a relationship with your parents? So it shocked you to have to see a father have this conversation with a daughter and 
another child who's not theirs and talk about deep intimate things like men and, re and, and relationships. Yes, it shocked me. It actually sh shocked me because I didn't expect it. Mm -hmm. I was just going there. It's my friend's home. Yes. So when the dad started a conversation and then all of a sudden he's talking about uh, relationships, how to handle relationships. And of course, we are like 21, 22 years old. Yes. So I had never received such kind of a conversation from my parents. Yes. So I wondered like uh, how my, my, my relationship with my parents, mm -hmm. is, it, is it really on a good standing ground? Because I needed such type of conversations. Mm. Being a young girl, 21, 22 years old, you need someone to tell you this is how it is. This is how you handle things. So when it came from my friend's dad, yes, not even mom, yes, <laughs> dad, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it it shocked me, and that is when I started digging deeper. Mm -hmm. How is my relationship with my parents? Mm -hmm. And I realized it is the basic things. We talk about the basic things. We don't talk about life just yeah. life as and it things is that really matter yeah or be prepared or get the tools from them for yes. you to be able to navigate yes. the world yes and this happened for all of you it did okay. it happened for all of us okay yes uh so you continue yes and say so Im uh, do you really have a relationship with your parents you ask yourself yeah. and you say immediately my brain went on a rant how often do i call my parents to just say hi and catch up on some village gossip do i ask or receive any advice from them how do i talk to them how do i t who do i talk to when i'm emotionally down yes was was it them at any point that you call when you're emotionally down no my my friends were my pillars through mm -hmm. my campus years. Yes. My friends were the people I could go to when I'm emotionally down. Either my friends or I just deal with my own problems yeah. the way I know. But uh, calling my parents the, about advice on anything, I it never came up. If I call my parents, it's, you know, upkeep money, mm. uh, exams. <laughs> Yeah, we are closing on this date. I'll be coming home. Yes. Just, yeah, those common things. But now, other, other, other social issues, I never asked for my parents for any advice. And it's because I, I felt like we didn't have that standing ground. Mm. Like, how could I start? I didn't have that standing ground to start asking them for advice. I just yeah. knew parents are here to take care of us. Yes. Yes. And they are doing that. We are not they stopping hungry. Yes. Hungry rather. Yes. We are in school. Yes. We are studying. We are closed. Yes. So they were taking care of the basics. Yes. But there was Everything. so much more, especially when you uh, became a teenager going up. Yeah. There's so much that was happening in life. Yes. And would you talk to your other siblings about any of these things? Your first boyfriend? No. Never. <laughs> are you... Are you the first born? <laughs> no, I'm the second born. Okay. Yes, I have and two brothers. Uh -huh. But I, I never talk to them about anything social either. I, I just never talk to them about it. And they it. also didn't? No. Hey. Yes. But we're happy we have a book. <laughs> that means healing is happening. Healing is happening. <laughs> and if you have any questions whatsoever, you can share your stories with us as well. Triple one, triple four, triple one. That is our SMS line. Switch TVK here on Instagram, Switch TVK on Facebook. We will be right back after this break. Welcome back to Full Circle on Book Circle this morning. We're talking about uh, Elizabeth Mukamba's book. It's Yes, I Am My Father's Daughter. And this is a story of her going through life feeling disconnected as a family, emotionally especially, with everything else being provided for her. And she tells all about it in the book. I've just opened randomly chapter 10. And the uh, header for that one is, You Save Everyone But Who Saves You? The oppressed versus the healed. So I'm just going to read a small excerpt from it and then 
you know, you'll tell us more about it. Okay. So it says, since the discovery of feminism, the world has been talking about the plight of the woman in the society. In the United States of America, talks have never ceased about the plight of the black person in the society. It has been evident how society categorizes someone into a specific group and already has expectations from him or her for merely belonging to that particular group. Did you feel this way? Yes, I do. You uh, still do? Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh huh. Um, I still do, but right now I'm aware of it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, because uh, growing up, we grew up in the village. Mm -hmm. uh, my family was a well-known family in the village. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents were both teachers. A uh, very good profession. Back home, yes. that is everything. Kamalimu. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. society categorizes you. It places you in in. Uh, in a place where you, you are supposed to behave a certain way because of who you are. Yeah. Now, growing up, um, Toto wa Mwalimu, mm. you, you are given, you have a certain set of rules that you are supposed to follow. These rules, they're not given to you. They're, they're just there, you mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. So you grow up knowing I'm supposed to behave this way. I'm supposed to do, to do this. Yeah. I'm supposed to go to school and pass. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You see. Yes. Now, oh, when uh, when my father passed on, yeah, I I I read so much. I knew so much about him during that short period after he has passed. Yes. Yes. Because I was disconnected to this person, but he's my father. And when he's passed on, that's when I learned so much about him. And I learned that he had been going through a very hard time. But because of who he is, he can't share. He can't tell anyone. He can't. So he, he only had to the option to just die slowly because he could not open up to someone because he's the someone who people open up to. Oh, my goodness. Yes. yes. He is the person who people come to. Now, he couldn't. He doesn't have someone to go to. So he saves everyone, but no one is there to save him. So he had, he went through a hard time before he died. And we only came, even his family, we came to realize that after he's dead. Oh no. Yes. So that chapter mm -hmm. is dedicated to that one month period that I got to learn him, I learned that he was there for everybody because of who he is. Yeah. But now, who was there for him? Yeah. Yes, he, no one. No one basically. was there. Yes. He kept giving and giving, giving and giving. giving. Yes. But refilling himself of being able to remove the load yes. from himself. Yeah. But th there was no outlet. There was no outlet. There was no outlet. So did this make you understand him better? Yeah. It made me understand him better mm. and uh, understand myself better because I was also that type of person that... Doing the same thing. I was doing the same thing. I was trying to keep myself together for the society. I was trying to pretend I'm okay. The whole of 2019, I was not doing okay emotionally, mentally. I wasn't doing okay. But if I meet someone, they will never know. They will never know that I'm not doing okay. If I go home, my parents will never know that I'm not doing okay. Yeah. I just say, yes, I'm in Nairobi. I have a job. Uh, it's a nice job. Yes, it is a nice job. But I, I feel like there is something I'm missing. Yes. And I could never say that I'm missing something. Would you say that through this book that you started the journey after dad passed on and you started on this and you wrote it and it's out there. So we're reading personal things yes. that you've kept quiet about for such a long time. Yes. And now you're sharing with the world that you're slowly getting to a place of you know what maybe i'm not a hundred that person will be like yes, yes yes i will conquer the world and i'll do all these things but i am working my journey towards yes. that yes um this book 
it represents it's a path to healing yes it's it's a form it's a way that i use to ex well, first of all to express myself yes and then to just let it out because the stories that i share in that book they were living in my head literally making my head go spin. spin every time every free time i had my head was spinning now i had to let it out and because i had a reference point yes now i understood my father i was no longer mad at him mm. i understood him yeah. and now i understood myself and now let's heal now and understand that we are not 100% it's okay we fail sometimes yeah so this is a way of uh, just letting myself be okay with yes. being human yes yes absolutely yeah. and thank you so much for putting it out there and thank you so much for sharing with the world thank this um, before we find out where you can get this book yeah. there's a bit there's a last quote here that says and that is the thing about love that that's that that and that is the thing about love they don't understand it shapes you in its absence too yes so even when it's not there even when it's not there it shapes you and i say that because um there is a section in the book i've written where my dad's friends used to come to me and tell me hey, your dad is so proud of you but i never heard that from from him, him. yes so that's when i understand like he really loved me he was proud of me you see it yes. shaped, it shaped me in some way yes and once he was gone it now it continues shaping me Absolutely. that love that is no longer present but it shapes me to the end to <laughs> wherever i go elizabeth where can we get this book um this book uh, we can get it at uh, rafu books yes uh, kibanga books yes. and nuria kenya okay. those are three online bookstores okay. And uh, you can also call me directly. Please share your number. Uh, 07 12 788 377. Okay. Yes. Say that again. 07 12 788 377. Alafu Only 1,000 Kenyan shillings. Okay. Yes. Okay. You get your book, you enjoy the story. Yes. So much, so much inside there. This okay. is just a nutshell. All right. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks True. so much for having me. Okay.